Thank you to the organisers for the invitation to speak. Uh, and I actually uh, chose the topic of infrastructure because the theme of the meeting is actually infrastructure and BRCs. Just a little bit of uh, background about the differences between Australia and the Philippines. Um, as you can see, the population in the Philippines is kind of four times the amount of Australia, but the land size of Australia is significantly different. Uh, and the population density is kind of what blew me away. We have three people per square kilometres. Here you have 363. <laughs> so, so we have unique problems in Australia, largely through the distance, because it's a big country, and getting um, coordination samples from one side to the other has different challenges that you probably don't have here. Uh, and so I'm based in New South Wales, which is this blue state on the map, so it's the largest state by population, but having said that, we still have less than 8 million people there. The capital of the uh, state is Sydney, and healthcare in, across all Australia actually is delivered by both public and private providers. But within New South Wales, regardless of whether the healthcare is uh, public or private, oversight of all healthcare is by the Ministry of Health, which is a government department. And the pathology services to all the public hospitals in far one pediatric unit are provided by New South Wales Health Pathology, but private hospitals tend to use private pathology providers. Um, New South Wales Health Pathology in 2013, I think it is now, uh, 15, 15, were given a, a mandate to, to deliver a statewide service delivery model for biobanking. We were given funding for three years. And it was based on the back of this report and by the government that really wanted to build on the biobanking framework that was already there and to make it better and the best quality for the for people of the state. And why did they pick New South Wales Health Authority to do that? Because there are a lot of biobanks out there already, existing big ones, small ones, mostly based in medical research centres or universities. And that was one of the reasons, I think, because we're an independent entity, we have no allegiance to any particular hospital, health service, university, medical research centre, etc. So we really didn't have any kind of favouritism. There's a lot of, um, it's common in most countries, competition between universities. So to give this to a university, which would have been a sort of logical thing to do, it would have been challenging. And as we already existed, the service collection and transport network was already there. So just simple things like HR, recruitment, etc., already existed statewide across the organisation. We've got over 200 collection rooms, for example, so if people wanted samples collected, we could tap into the network of collection services that we'd already got. And transport services, we're used to moving samples around the state, that's what we do all day long. So we, we knew about things that were important to the environmental integrity. Health pathology offers diagnostic services, so we also have experts in pathology, biochemistry, microbiology, genomics, everything. So we've got a bunch of people we could tap into if we needed to. Obviously, have expertise in sample handling, that's what the core business is. Quality um, pathology, diagnostic pathology labs have got to be accredited to ISO 15189, have been for a long time, mandatory um, testing, QC, QA accreditation by the National Accreditation Body. So we're used to working under those strict, under regulated conditions. And obviously also because we're dealing with patients, we're used to handle the patient confidentiality issue. So what we did when we were first given this money, well, I wouldn't know at the time, I was brought in when they were given the money. Um, we really scoped the landscape that was out there to start with. We looked at the biomites that were there, where they were, what they were doing, what, what we thought needed improving, and we kind of came up with a list of priority areas that we wanted to work on. So unfortunately, we stick here. And standardisation was really a big one. We spoke to researchers and people using biobanks and the biobanks themselves. One of the big things they had problems with was material transfer agreements. Every university had their own. They were all different, and they would often hold up samples getting out to researchers. It could be by six months because they were held up in a legal department at the university who didn't like clause 27B.1. It was to that degree. <laughs> so we spoke to all the universities, all the legal departments, the Ministry of Health, the researchers, the biobanks, and came up with some standardised material transfer agreements. 
sort of a kind of a compromise for everybody, I guess. Nobody's really happy with all of it, but it's it's a, it's a big strong starting point that will speed things up, and the university and legal people agreed to give them. So we kind of set a precedent that we would hope would then go out as readily as wide. The other thing we wanted to um, build was consent forms and the consent processes and in tandem with the ethics, local ethics committees. So if we could, if we could have a standard consent form statewide, again that would make things a lot easier for everybody and everyone would know where we were. We developed this, um, what we call the consent toolkit. Uh, one of the mandates for this was that it would be written in plain English at the reading age of a child, I think it was grade nine at school. And we've got service level, we also wanted to, to have standardised service level agreements between the different programs that are out there. Um, because we're a pathology department, we looked at our own, in our own backyards, and we looked what happened in our anatomical pathology laboratories and how we could improve um, both the quality of the samples that were coming through, the access, the, just the whole process. So we asked for, uh, across the whole network, we called expressions of interest for people to be involved and chose two laboratories that work slightly differently and followed through how things are processed, how we could change it and how we could integrate biobanking into the routine diagnostic pathway without it, um, it impacting on the workload of those people or minimising the impact in the department. And a big one for us was to build a quality framework. So this wasn't just for our own activities, it's for biobanks statewide. So we worked with Peter and his team in Canada to adopt the Canadian certification program, which has been going for quite a long time. Um, we changed it a little bit, we put mandatory tests into our program that they didn't have in theirs. But it's really based on an education program. It's a voluntary certification, it's not accreditation. And we, so, but we incorporated all our own regulations, legislation, etc. And because we really want to offer services for the state, anyone in New South Wales can buy banking, can take part in this for free. Uh, over 50 biobanks have registered and over 350 people now have undergone some of the education module. So we think it's kind of working. The word's getting out there that there are quality standards that people should be working to. Uh, there's a planned national rollout of the program. But people outside New South Wales are going to have to pay, but it's a minimum amount just to recover our costs. $250. We also um, we heard about Dr. Lee's talk yesterday about development of ISO 276. So we were involved with Standards Australia, our, our national um, standards body, and I was the chair of the very committee there for about four years working on this, in particular working group two, the biobanking one. So we've been involved in the development of the standard all the way along. And it was nice when it was actually released because it's a lot of work. That's <laughs> Dr. <Start to> Lee. That's <laughs> testing to. Sorry, this is just a, a bit of a promotional video put together by. I'll just stop it actually. Is that, uh, once we started delivered a lot of the things that we wanted to do, and then we were thrown a kind of extra task in that the state. Uh, Politics, of course, was up for an election, and an election pledge was to build a statewide biobank. So we were given $12 million and asked to plan, deliver, and have the thing running within 12 months. And this is what they did. This, this is put together by our comms team. <laughs>
people have provided with the funding to do this, it's kind of once in a lifetime opportunity, so we really won't go home for robotics. Um, the biggest expense in only by is the personnel, well, at least in Australia, but staffing costs are huge. And the more we could automate, the better. Plus the tracking, everything 3D barcoded is 3D barcoded as it comes in. So the opportunity for people to put their own sample and their own tube are really minimised. That was a, a, one of the really big pushes. Um, so we built this, we delivered it, uh, and now we need to seek utility. And one of the ways the government helped that is that they've got what they call strategic collection, with these competitive research grants for people who would use the services of the State Biobank for their collections. I wasn't involved in this, but these were the projects that were funded in the first round of that um, collection call. So that's what we've done, and we're still obviously working on a lot of this. These are the main things that we want to focus on in the short term at least, in the next 12 months or so. So our research engagement is obviously big for us. Now we've got this state-of-the-art biobank, we want it to be used. Uh, one of the strategic decisions was to appoint a clinical research director, and he works one day a week for us. He's a clinical oncologist the other four days a week. But he is really been a valuable asset because he's got that link between the, cl the clinical team he runs his own oncology clinical trials, and he's got so he's got that kind of cl the clinical credentials. And uh, three weeks ago, we, our new biobanking director started, and she's got a, a very very strong research background. So we now feel we've got the kind of uh, expertise in those areas to attract people and to talk to people to use the services of the biobank. Uh, the other thing we, worked, we did when we built the biobank, we looked at for a database system to operate it. We used it as a government, we had to go out to tender, and we, we came down to three main bids in the end and selected the one package system. So that is now in, it's secure, it's held up and backed on the New South Wales Health Data Centres. So it's as secure as any health data in the state. So that's, that's also a bit of a cue being able to use that, that system. And because we're established to help all the biobanks across the state, not just ourselves. We are rolling this out now to any external biobank that wants to use it can use the link system, link in through the cloud. And their data will also be backed up on the health data centres. For the small biobanks who have only got a few people, not many samples, then that will be free. For people where we've got to provide support services, then there'll be a small annual cost on that, but a lot less than it would cost them to buy their own biobank. But it also helps for searching for specimens of people using the same database. There will be some requirements for people who want to use that, so certain data standardisation, so 15 different ways of calling a particular piece of tissue will all will have to come to the party. <laughs> and but that, again, that will help in the specimen location. And there's also data linkage programmes within New South Wales, so you have this organisation called the Centre for Health uh, record linkage or the show off, um, and they collect um, pharmaceutical benefits data, hospital admissions, lifestyle uh, questionnaires, and things like that. Um, educational outcomes, and we're hoping, well, we are, we're going to link into them, but we've got to get the patient consent right before we can actually apply that. But the, there's kind of agreement with them that we will work with them to do that. And the ISO, um, ISO 9001, we've been working on, that's going in as we speak. It should be, should be hopefully all go well by the end of the year. And we've been through as our National Association of Testing, National Association of Testing Authority, and they uh, provide the accreditation of the ISO standard for the Diagnostic Pathology Labs, and we're working with them to, uh, for the implementation of the new biobanking standard. So they're kind of using it as a test case to how, how it's going to be rolled out, what things are going to be measured, how are they going to monitor that. So that's a very good relationship with them. We're hoping that goes well. And we hope, we hope, hope to be the first accredited biobanking in Australia. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and the thing that I've been spending a lot of time on actually lately is the scoping for a second site of the statewide biobank. There are disadvantages to being on one site for your backup samples and storage for the one. Um, and the state also realised that there's no um, really strategic approach to microbial bio bio collections. 
there are microbial virus bacteria, fungi bacteria, phages, experts and people out there collecting all these samples, but they're really not coordinated. But as luck would have it, they're mostly on the same medical research campus. So we were asked to do a scoping study to expand and, and do backup for our existing statewide biobank, but also to incorporate the microbial services. So we're just waiting now for a green light to go ahead and do that, but hopefully in the next 12 months that will certainly be kicked off. This is not my slide, this is actually the, the government's, New South Wales government vision for biobanking. <laughs> and I don't know if there's a point around this, but I would actually change this and have, it's not just the statewide biobank, there should be kind of you know, a networked node model for all the existing biobanks, we've got a very good cancer biobank out there that already exists. Um, and also some other like lung diseases and things. So I think this needs to expand out. But it's good that they've got a vision. Whether we agree with it or not, it's kind of <laughs> our problem. But yeah, it's good that they're talking that way. So really, what we've been doing is we're building a framework, and with the overall aim of improving access to and the quality of the vice residents that are available. So that was really our first mission, I guess, to, to get the quality up and to get word out there that samples up here. We want to, want to in a more sustainable framework and we really want to embed the process into routine pathways so it's not an add on, it's an integrated part of uh, what happens when you samples wind away through the health system because 95% of our samples come through the diagnostic services. And ultimately, we want to improve research opportunities and collaborations. 